For Crema Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Sagner, to discuss his column titled, Popular Power, Insurrectionism, and Their Legacies. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So why do you think a popular power has more or less disappeared from ANC statements and their practices? You know, when the ANC was unbanned, some of us came from the UDF and were very involved in popular power. And I think that was why I was detained in 1986 to, till unbanning I was then, and I was under house arrest in the last part because we were very involved in this popular power period, which was very exciting. You know, I didn't live in a township, but I was involved in uh, recording what was happening, meeting with comrades who worked in these areas. And we hoped in the ANC political education section that this popular power orientation would be continued within the ANC itself, that being a member would not just be that you were called on to go and vote every five years, that you were active as a branch member in doing things, that membership was something that you practice in your daily experience. Now, I came to realize, especially when I got into leadership, that that was not what other people had in mind or the leadership had in mind. Even President Mandela used to say the ANC has to lead. In other words, it can't keep on looking back and asking the members what do they think about this, what do they think about that, because they've got to lead. But I think there had to be, there ought to have been some combination on continued activity of the membership as well as the leadership leading. You know, the word service delivery it epitomizes this idea that you wait, you sit there waiting for the government to deliver services to you. Now, we thought that the membership would be actively involved in ensuring that these things happen. To wait, uh, there's a writer, John Berger, who says, to wait is characteristic of being a prisoner. Now, being popular power is characteristic of being an active subject. Mm. And now if the popular power period uh, introduced new meanings into understanding uh, the freedom charter and democracy, why is it this not now acknowledged or is it just your idiosyncratic interpretation? Yes, and maybe my idiosyncratic interpretation, but the evidence is there. When um, people organize street committees, I've recorded some of them, like Wes Hamade in Utenhaig, saying, what we are doing now in the street committees and in popular justice is we are implementing the first clause of the Freedom Charter, meaning the people shall govern. Now, that was one indication that self-consciously they saw themselves doing it. But when the Freedom Charter was introduced, I quote in my article, uh, the late Dorothy Nyembe singing a song about Dr. Uh, Dadu, Dr. Naidu, uh, Chief Lutuli are going to take us to parliament because the vote was interpreted as meaning the way in which the people shall govern will be interpreted. Now, I think that's correct, but what happened in the popular power period and it had happened before with the unions. People realized that they didn't have to wait till the day of having the vote, that they could start to take control of their own lives now immediately in a number of ways. In the popular power period, they did that. So what I'm saying then is, okay, maybe I am uh, articulating it as an theorization of what they did, but I'm doing it on the basis of what they actually, I'm taking it from what was objective reality, what people did on the ground, and sometimes how they expressed it, as with Weza Amadi's statement. So it is 
idiosyncrasy, but it is also truth. And I think it's important that we understand that, and it also applies to the present. You see, some people feel that uh, we must have socialism and they waiting for the day when the seizure of power or something like that. Now, the Communist Party in 1995 introduced the slogan, socialism is the future, build it now. In other words, they were saying two things. Socialism is the future, but there were things that you could do before that moment of uh, having a socialist government. You could start with legislation, like Marx himself looked at factory legislation very closely. So it's not just with the Freedom Charter, it's also with issues concerning the workers like socialism. And lastly, Professor, when you argue now for a close link between the UDF led a popular power and insurrection, is that not a danger now of losing the distinctive qualities of each? Well, you see, I think it's very important that we recognize that if I say that many people in the UDF link themselves up with the process of insurrection, regard themselves as members, albeit secret members of the, the ANC or the SACP or MK, and were participating in insurrection, not necessarily as soldiers, but sometimes seeing the activities that they did in people's power as part of the process of overthrowing the government. I'm saying that popular power and the unique aspects of popular power remained that. And those who were MK soldiers who were not involved in popular power retained those distinct qualities. But there was a link because many of us saw ourselves as being part of the process of overthrowing the apartheid regime. And it raises questions that are important to think about because someone like myself, although I was involved in political education, I didn't think about constitutions much then. I used to teach constitutional law in the past, but I wasn't thinking about constitutions. I was thinking about overthrowing the government. And uh, I thought it was clear, what has to be done is an immediate transfer of power to the people. Uh, Francis Slabert quotes me, he says, he explained to me about what he does, I was going to do to investigate democracy. I said, look, man, wasting our time. We know what we need. We want the immediate transfer of power to the people. And then the interviewer says that, did you ever speak to me about this again? And he says, yes, I did. What did he say? He says that I laughed and laughed because I realized later that I was one of the people, some of the comments said they did discuss separation of state and power and things like that, but I didn't actually discuss that. I was preoccupied with overthrowing the government despite being trained in constitutional law. So I think that there was a blurry, a, there were problems, but it was a reality that many of us were involved in insurrection. Thank you, Professor. Thanks a lot. There was researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Sartner, speaking to Klima Media's quality about his column titled, Popular Power, Insurrectionism and Their Legacies.